Well, hey everybody, thanks for joining. I'm glad to see everyone here. And uh, just some more music to get us started. Instead of the canned music, I figured, you know, I've got the uh, piano in here, so I figured I'd give some more for those who were here yesterday. But uh, yeah, I appreciate coming out. This is just a webinar about triggers in BlackBaud. So the idea is you have some event that happens in BlackBaud and you want to take action in another system based on that. So we'll go over some examples and what that looks like in just a minute here. But yeah, like I said, welcome to everyone. And um, I guess another way to put this would be we're looking at ways to do low-code, no-code automations um, based on things that happen in BlackBaud. So some exciting stuff. Um, and yes, again, another review for those who were here yesterday's webinar, but chat privacy on YouTube um, it's a little bit different. It uh, will show up to other people who are here, but we won't show it once the webinar is over. So it'll be private once this is done, because this is going to go out as a recording. Thanks, Patrick. I just saw your comment there. It's uh, we have a few seconds of delay here, and so, and yeah, that's another thing I'll mention too about the chat. Feel free to interrupt me at any time with questions or anything. I will be watching the chat, but there are a few seconds of delay. Okay, and. Um, Another, another little bit of review for those who were here yesterday, but I'll go through this quickly. I think many of you already know, but um, a little bit about me. I am the founder of UserBus. I started getting into this in 2010 while I was working at a high school in Michigan. And I started writing some integrations for them, asked them if I could take some of those things public. And so 2014 is when uh, the first one of those went public. That was for fax at the time. And then 2018, um, got into BlackBaud and started working with that. And uh, I live in Michigan with my wife, Crystal, and our Beagle Pointer, uh, also known as a Boingle, uh, and his name is Skeeter. And uh, so unfortunately my name is covering my wife's name here, but you can see our, our dog's name. So <laughs> there's us, there's Skeeter. And a little bit about the company. Um, so basically what UserBus does is we move data for schools. And we can move that into syncs. We can move that in for other types of integrations and automations. That's the gist of it. Like I said, we worked with FACS since 2018, which is now mainly the student information system that we work with, as well as uh, FACS is another one that we work with still. And we work with dozens of schools across the US. All right, so let's dive into the topic at hand. What are automation triggers? Well, my definition of this is a a trigger is something that starts a workflow in response to an event. So I'll give you some examples of this. Let's say this is I'll, this will be from a BlackBaud schools perspective. Let's say you have a new user in BlackBaud. Let's say that you have a candidate if you're using enrollment management and a candidate status changes. Um, another uh, possibility is you have a student with a GPA and it dips below or rises above a certain level and you want to take some action when that happens. Or you can you can um, have something happen like on a schedule every certain number of minutes or every certain number of hours. Now a trigger kicks off an automation workflow. Let's look at that. A workflow is uh, basically a series of steps that your school takes to get something done. And so you have those, whether they're formal, written down, or whether they're just in somebody's head, or whether they're in an automation platform. But an example of this would be, let's say you have uh, an athletic event tonight and you want to post about it on social media. That would be a uh, trigger, the athletic events tonight, and then the action is you're posting about it somewhere. Or let's say a student's GPA drops below a certain number, like we were saying, and you want to take action maybe just once when that happens and that threshold is crossed. So um, in this example here, our trigger at the top is a new user is created, it says in user bus, but this is, BlackBaud would be flowing through user bus to this. And uh, so what happens is this workflow would then run every time this happens. In these steps below it here would be the actions that you run. And so here we're adding a member to a group in Google Groups. And then we have some branching that says if it's a student, do one thing. If it's a candidate, do another thing, etc. And you can add lots of different actions so that uh, you know more than one thing happens when the trigger happens, if you want. Or it can just be one thing. 
And then all this together is called the workflow. Okay, so um, some of you, this may be totally familiar to, but if you haven't created something like this before, there are these different platforms that you can use to do this. And uh, three of the examples are Zapier.com, PowerAutomate.com, and Make.com. And uh, these three platforms that I've cited here, they all have similar goals. You know, they all work in kind of a similar way. You have the trigger, and then you have your actions and some, some logic that you want to carry out. I'm curious if you want to drop it in the chat, if anybody wants to talk about, are you using one of these platforms already? If so, um, which one are you using? If you want to, uh, if if you want to tell us that, and if not, of course that's fine too. But uh, what what uh, Blackbot has kind of encouraged is Power Automate. I shouldn't say necessarily. Yeah, I suppose they they have their most presence there right now. Let's put it that way. They've got actions out there. You can see in the screenshot here. Um, this flow is okay. So you went for Power Automate there. Yep, they've got uh, here you can get school years using Blackbot, one of Blackbot's actions, and we're getting the current school year, and then we're getting athletic teams uh, for the current school year. So, you know, these are some examples of actions that Blackbot has made available. However, the, uh, I guess the problem for some schools would be there, Blackbot has not released any triggers, meaning, uh, meaning that when you actually want some action to be kicked off, there is no way to do that easily. Okay, I'm seeing another message. Power Automate and Zapier quite a bit, neither in production right now. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I know I've taught some with some schools with experience with the Power Automate that BlackBot has. They have kind of wondered that, you know, when are triggers coming, if they're coming, and I don't think BlackBot has made any kind of commitment to triggers yet, but they do have those actions out there. So why triggers? Um, you know, gave some examples earlier, but why might a school want these versus you know just running something daily or on a schedule? Well, you know, at a high level, there are times when you want to take action just when something changes, and that you know if you run something every day, it's a batch process. Let's say you run it at 3 a.m., you might find yourself having to keep track of what changes. If it's truly actions that only need to be carried out when something changes, sometimes you just need to get a whole bunch of data and dump it into another system. And, but sometimes it's really the change that you care about. So that's when triggers come in handy. Um, another nice thing about these platforms is that they are low code, no code automation. And uh, I'm not bashing code, I like code, I write a lot of code. But it, sometimes there are situations where you want to give somebody the ability to drag and drop and use low code for some of these simpler types of automations. With something like Zapier, you know, Zapier integrates with over 6,000 apps. And, um, you know, for some, some examples, MailChimp, that some may be using for email marketing, Constant Contact, Google, um, different social media platforms, you know, you could, you could post to your school's Facebook uh, um, as part of one of these workflows. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And another nice thing about this, not specific to triggers, but using these platforms is that you can control your own integrations and workflows. And uh, like I say, this kind of goes along with low code, no code, that uh, there may be times when you're going to drop down into code, but it's also nice to have that higher level view and control over it. Okay, so some examples of um, different ways that you could use triggers. So let's say that, again, to go back to candidates, Let's say you have a candidate status change. So maybe a candidate status changes from inquired to toured. They've now, they've now taken a tour of the school. And uh, you want to take some action when that happens to a candidate. So you can add their parents to, let's say, a list and email platform, like uh, Constant Contact, Mail, MailChimp, something. And then that's going to send them a series of emails. And some of these things like, like this, um, it's kind of right on the border where you would want to only do it once, right? And of course, if it fails, you're going to have it maybe retry or, you know, alert somebody. But you don't want every day to be taking action in your email marketing system for everybody who's in the toured status. You really want to do this right when they change to toured and then not make modifications again. So by having a trigger, you, could, you, you would have an easy time of that. Here's another example. Uh, students' GPA changes. 
So let's say you have a, a student, their GPA falls below a certain level, and uh, you know maybe you want to send an email to somebody, you want to remove the student from some group, maybe you want to add them to some group, whatever those are. And you know I, I don't some of these examples I don't know Blackbot may already have some way to tr to trigger certain things in there, but the beauty of using a generic automation platform like this is it really opens it up to all those different apps that your school is using, you know, the 6,000 plus. Whereas if you're using a built-in Blackbot automation, you're limited to what they've kind of, the path they've laid out for you to do when, when you need to automate something. It may be, you know, send an email or whatever it is, but you don't have as much freedom to work with those other apps as you might want. Here's another example, um, athletic event. So that was one I mentioned earlier. So let's say an athletic event is today, and as a trigger to that, you want to post on Facebook or X or message parents. And uh, you can take those actions after that trigger. All right, so that, that's what uh, this whole webinar is about, really, is just that we're bringing this to Blackboard for schools where this has not been a capability before. So here's an example out on, on uh, Zapier. This is... You know, it could be power automated anyway, but in, in the box here, we see some triggers that we've defined for uh, for user bus, which is, you know, pulling this from Blackboard. So the trigger is new group. Let's say a new academic group or is created or a new community group is created. A new user is created. Uh, a term is starting or ending, or maybe a user has updated. You know, some piece of data in their user account has been changed. And these are, you know, this is a first pass at it, but but uh, that's what we're really looking to collaborate with you and see what triggers you want, you know, what use cases this could really fit into. Okay, uh, one thing that, you know, I was talking to people and one thing that came up was, well, we don't really want something to happen just when a trigger is, uh, a trigger is triggered, however you phrase that. We want somebody to review it first because there's, could be errors in the data, so this is absolutely, um, you know, it makes sense and is something that we would definitely want to be able to handle with this. So the idea here is, is to be able to have a human in the loop, as it's called in automation. And this means instead of just firing off action after action when a trigger happens, you, uh, you put somebody in the loop to review and to make a choice. So here's an example of how you could do that. Let's say you're using a Zapier Power Automate. And um, workflow one, you have a candidate come in. You can have it send an email to maybe somebody in your admissions department asking them to review. Okay, that's your whole uh, workflow for that first one. Then you have a second workflow, which is triggered by an admissions reply to maybe some certain e email inbox. And admission says, yes, this looks good. Okay, then the automation continues by adding them to the marketing platform. If admission says, no, it needs changes, you could do anything else. And you can, you can even do this with something like a Google form. You could send a Google form to admissions. They fill it out, and then the data on that form then flows back to, uh, to Blackboard or to somebody else who enters it into Blackboard. So there's a lot of room to keep flexible there. Uh, because, you know, that is a totally valid uh, use case that will come up a lot where you need somebody in there, uh, not just uh, an automation firing things off without anybody reviewing it or looking at it. Okay, any, uh, any questions so far anyth on anything that's been covered so far? And like I say, I'm keeping an eye on the chat here, so if things come in, we'll like, keep going. No worries. Um... If you're wondering how you can try this, so this is uh, in the fairly early stages, not publicly available yet, but the, the technology has all been vetted out and there's there's things built for it, but, um, but it's not publicly available yet. So we're looking for early adopters. So if this is something your school is interested in, um, you know, if you'd like to be a part of this, you'd have the chance to give feedback, and this could be everything from, you know, what triggers are even available here. Um, I mean, you know, some of that I mentioned earlier were GPA, for example. And maybe that's important to some schools. Maybe that's not important to your school. And so uh, 
that's the kind of feedback that we'd be looking for. So you'd have an opportunity to kind of shape where this goes. And also to be able to use it free, you know, while we're getting started with this and, and making those design decisions and things, this could be something, if you're looking to hop on something that, like this right away, you could uh, you could have free access to it, it kind of partnering with us and realizing, yeah, there may be a few bumps along the way. But, yeah, really just looking to gauge interest in it and get, get feedback on it. But um, the beauty of this is that it really does open up Blackboard to um, all those thousands of apps, whereas uh, you know in the past there hasn't really been as much of that type of integration. In Power Automate, they do have the actions and the ability to pull to make API calls, but um, it hasn't really been to the extent. And also being able to bring this to another platform like something like Zapier. All right, so now I that really concludes the the gist of it. Any questions on? any of that anything that you'd uh, be looking to see right away or thoughts uh, how this could fit into to your school or just uh, questions for me and uh, again just give a couple of minutes here a couple of seconds actually <laughs> I'll just go on to the next slide while we're waiting because like I say things can come through and I'll stop and pause but um, yeah this is my contact info for anybody who'd like to reach out my cell number is here um, email address and uh, yeah I really appreciate it and I'd love to hear any feedback on this is really something like I say that I want to collaborate with schools on and see you know what your needs are and where you'd like to go with this so I think it's a cool thing to uh, to be able to have now and absolutely yep just saw that. thanks for sharing what's possible absolutely yeah that's it's gonna be exciting I think to see how people can use this as um, really opens up for schools to be able to do kind of more self-serve automations and for different departments even who may already be using something like Zapier to really be able to plug this into their workflows you know whether it's enrollment or education or the fundraising or whatever it is to be able to use that more so alright well in, th in that case no more questions um, we can conclude and thanks again everybody for coming out and like I say, again, feel free to reach out to me anytime and talk about this, and I will try to follow up a bit later and uh, get you all's thoughts on this. Okay, the eventual cost, the require the school to have its own automation platform. Okay, yes, that's um, a good question. That's something that is still TBD a little bit. If you went with something like Zapier, I know they do require the school to use Zapier, and I think... Uh, to have their own Zapier license. In other words, UserBus cannot host in Zapier for you. Um, so you would have to have some type of Zapier license, and then you would have to have the the UserBus connector also, which would be like a separate license. But I think that the Zapier license, I'd have to look at what their free tier is. I think they have a fairly good free tier. Um, and then there's uh, you know their lowest tier would be the next up. And uh, so, yeah, for something like that, I know for Power Automate too, I think it's the same. So I believe there would be the two separate. But yeah, and and also, but looking also, because UserBus could provide, you know, for some of these syncs, something like that, and even a, a generic um, webhook for people who are more comfortable with the technical side of it. Just hooking into a webhook would be able to, you'd be able to do kind of the same thing. Yeah, so good question. Thanks for that. All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate the time. And um, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. And I hope you all have a good rest of your Thursday. And if I uh, don't talk to you before the weekend, uh, have a great weekend as well. So, thanks.